So one of the biggest complaints that I get from women is the issue of not knowing where they stand with a man, not knowing what this man's intentions are, not knowing if he's, you know, genuine about getting into a serious relationship, does he desire marriage, all these different things. And unfortunately, this lack of clarity creates so many situations, or we could say situationships, where women end up dealing with a guy way longer than they should have, all right? And developing unhealthy attachments, which now cause them to struggle to walk away, which then also drains them, causes stress, derails them in different aspects of their life. You name it, some of you have been through it. Some of you may be going through it right now. And I wanted to do a video to help bring clarity to this on what you need to do when this man has not made it official and you don't know what the hell's going on. <laughs> like, you over here just like, what is happening? What is he thinking? How is he feeling? And unfortunately, before I even say unfortunately, cause, well, let, let's just get into what you need to do when he's yet to make it official and you're trying to understand the direction you guys are going in. So, off the rip, you need to first have the talk with him. Now, that may seem like self-explanatory or some of you might be like, of course, but here's the reality. A lot of women are very hesitant or, or overly cautious about asking questions like, what are we? What are we doing here? You know, either fearing that it's too soon to ask that question or that they may scare the man away, whatever the case may be, the conversation is never really had. And instead, it's danced around, there's hints that may be dropped, but there isn't a very direct, straightforward discussion about it. And so, as a woman, you have to understand you operating in a lack of clarity is only going to create more issues. If you have to suppress how you feel or the questions that you want to ask, number one, you have to ask yourself, if I am not comfortable enough to speak to this man, is this an issue of my own fears or has this man not created a safe space for me to communicate with him? Because if not, that's another issue in itself. However, let's just say it's about your own fears and you're not sure how he's going to react to it, whatever the case may be. Well, either way, if you suppress it, what's going to happen is it's going to stress you out. It's going to start to weigh heavily on you. It's going to drain you. You may start to ask the opinions of other people trying to get help with analyzing his behaviors and he said this, what does this mean? And all you're doing is driving yourself crazy. And you're not really getting any real answers because all anyone can do is speculate. All they can do is assume, but they don't know for sure what's going on with this man. Now, some of you will just cut the man off, say, you know, I'm done, I can't deal with this. But that's not the right thing neither. Like, because again, it's, it's unfair to just walk away if you haven't properly addressed the issue. The other thing to understand is in suppressing it, it's not just going to cause all this stress and anxiousness and tension. What's crazy is I've seen situations, for example, where a woman is dating a man, let's say they're eight months in and there's still no defined clarity as to what we are doing here, right? And let's say at the three-month mark, she was already feeling antsy about the situation, but she was afraid to talk about it. So she kept trying to just sweep it under the rug, deal with the man. Now, after five months of it bothering her and it coming out in different ways, because when you're suppressing something, trust and believe, it's trying to make its way out. And if you're not going to verbalize things, it's going to show up in your energy, your attitude. You know, there might be days where you're just annoyed by him and it's not really about what's going on in that moment. You're annoyed because you're not getting the clarity that you need and you're uncomfortable with the fact that he is not defining the relationship, right? So let's say finally the woman after month eight finally brings it up. She can't hold it anymore, lets it out. And the dude's like, well, I'm not sure if I want to move forward because for the last few months you've been acting crazy. Do you see what just happened? You suppressing it which then causes you to act out or to, to carry this negative energy, this tension, whatever, is now used against you as a reason why he's not sure if he wants to move forward with you. So it does you no good 
to not have the conversation with the man. And what you have to understand is it's not what you say, it's how you say it. So coming to him, interrogating, or coming to him with an attitude, asking him, where, what are we doing here? That's not going to get you a good result. But speaking calmly, with love, being open-minded, and when I say open-minded, allowing yourself to listen, to understand where he's coming from, doesn't mean you have to accept it, don't mean you have to keep dealing with him, but you're just coming in with the right energy to have a fruitful conversation, right? That's what matters most. And the sooner you can do it, the better, because the man who is serious about you is not going to take issue with you asking that question. It, at the very least, it's not going to make him run. Even if he thinks it's a little soon for him, let's say he genuinely feels that way, right? Let's say, for example, it's been two months. To you, you feel like we've been doing so much in these two months, and for him, he needs another month or so. Either way, he's not going to not like take issue with you asking if he actually cares about you. And he probably doesn't need that long to figure out if he wants to be in a relationship with you. Because here's the other thing. Men typically know right away if at the very least there is potential for something serious here. They've typically already put you in a box of whether I just want to kick it with her, I just want to sleep with her, she could be a potential girlfriend, this woman could be a potential wife. She has some kind of idea. And if we're being honest, when there's a lot of uncertainty, that usually means where it's like he's trying to convince himself that maybe this could be more but it's not really, the feeling is not strong enough for him to be confident about that, which is a red flag in itself. But we won't get too deep into that. The bottom line is, if he hasn't made it official yet, and you're wondering, and you're stressing, whatever, have the discussion with him, and let's nip it in the bud and gain the clarity that we need right now. All right, so now, another thing you need to do if the man has yet to make the relationship official is evaluate and address all red flags. So a common mistake I've seen occur with a lot of women is that the woman becomes so fixated on wanting things to progress and trying to figure out what's going on with that, that she takes her eye off what is, in my eyes, the more important issue of certain red flags that exist that are not being properly addressed and resolved. Okay? So it's like, who cares? Let me not say it like that. We should not focus on trying to make a relationship official when we're still having problems with communication. We should not be trying to make, focus on make, making a relationship official when he still struggles to pour into your needs. We should not be trying to make a relationship official when this man is still acting inappropriately in this situation, dating, whatever you want to call it that's going on right now with you and him. You got to make sure those things are addressed because whether he makes it official or not, like, listen, there's plenty of men who have made it official with a woman while the relationship was still toxic with no intention of stopping the toxic ways, all right? No intention of being better for the woman, just giving her the official title in order to lock her in, have her there, all right, now I can shut you up, you're not going to be stressing me about what we're doing here, and still be acting a fool. What, what, what's the purpose of that? It, it, doesn't, it, is, it doesn't serve you any good. So you, you have to be very mindful. And I think a lot of times, one of the struggles is a lot of, reason, a lot, a, a lot of the reason why people in general, but of course this video is for women, women will overlook a red flag that has slapped them in the face, all right? And even if it hasn't slapped you, it may have tapped your cheek or something, all right? Like it, it got your attention at some point. Is because you're afraid that if you dig and you look into it, it's going to be the reason why you have to let go. And because you don't want to let go right now for various reasons, you don't want to be alone, you're enjoying him in other ways, whatever the case may be, you choose to just sweep that red flag under the rug and try to keep it moving. But I always say the same red flags you ignore in the beginning are the same red flags that will end your relationship. So again, you're only... You're only prolonging the inevitable and you're creating a scenario or at least contributing to a scenario where you're going to end up more hurt, more damaged, more drained. And I, it's hitting my spirit right now, so I have to say it. And all you're doing is making yourself unavailable 
for the man who could, be, who is for you, or who may be coming that is willing to love you and pour into you. I've seen plenty of situations where women have met the man who actually genuinely want to be with them and do right by them, but they were still caught up in this messed up dysfunctional situation. And, and so, again, if you, you can't receive the right man if you won't let go of the wrong one. So that's another reason why we should not be trying to overlook these issues because you don't know what you are taking yourself away from and you don't realize the, the damage you're setting yourself up for. So with that said, address the red flags. Now remember, I, I have to repeat it. I always tell y'all, don't just see a red flag and run. Because some of y'all might be like, well, why are we addressing? If there's a red flag, it's, it's a wrap. It's, it's over. No, like because some red flags are misunderstandings. You you may have thought it was a red flag, but it actually was an orange flag. I don't know. It, it, it wasn't a flag at all. It was just maybe something that needs to be discussed and he could easily correct it. And that's how you see the seriousness of a man, as far as I'm concerned, is when you express the issue to him and then you see how he handles it. Because even a man who cares about you, who's serious about being with you, he's not perfect. He won't get everything right while he's still in the process of getting to know you and learn you. He might make some mistakes, but he has a willingness to do better. He has a willingness to learn and understand you at a level to where he can create harmony with you. Whereas the guy who's just trying to have fun and use you, he don't care about none of that. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be willing to discuss it and address these things. But also, in addressing the red flags you see with him, you have to be open to the red flags he may bring up with you, all right? We, we can't think that we're just this perfect person and we're doing nothing wrong and the issue's completely on them. Now, listen, are there some situations where that actually is the case? Yeah, but a lot of times, I would argue in most situations, there are things on both sides that need improvement. There are things on both sides that, if not corrected, can lead to the destruction of that relationship. So go into it saying, how can we both get to a healthier place so that we can have a successful relationship if that's what we both want from each other? All right, so let's keep this going. So another thing that you need to do, if he has yet to make it official, is set a deadline. Now, I have a video on why you need to give a man a time limit when you're dating him. And I know many of you don't like the idea of what you may view as an ultimatum or this strict, rigid time frame being put on things. And I get that. I understand that. However, for many of you, and, and not just for you as an individual, as a woman, but for that man to understand you are not here to play games, when there is no structure of time, when there is no understanding of, hey, listen, this is my limit. And if we can't have something established by then, we're going in a different direction. It, it creates the opportunity, let me not use the word opportunity, it creates an environment where there's a greater chance for things to be drawn out, and now what should have been maybe, and I'm just giving a random example, what should have maybe been a seven-month experience turns into five years, turns into, a, I have to say it, an unwanted pregnancy, and now a toxic baby's father, and all this other stuff that goes on with it. Like, and again... Understand, I am a coach who has sat down with a ridiculous amount of people who has gotten so many emails, who has addressed and helped people with so many different situations. I see how these things play out. I've seen them from the beginning. I've seen them from the end. I've seen them from the middle. Like, trust me, it, this is not a game. And so you really have to be mindful of that. And I think the reason, one of the big reasons why the time limit is good is it gives you something to hold yourself accountable to. Because again, you may find yourself wanting to give it a chance and keep kicking the can down the road. And then again, before you know it, you look up and time has just passed you. And, and unfortunately, what happens is as more time passes, the harder it gets to walk away from most individuals. All right. The, uh, the attachment, the unhealthy attachment only grows stronger or, as I mentioned, you create, you add other variables that now make it more difficult to walk away. Even if it's not kids, it might be two people moving in together. Or I, I mean, I've, situ I've seen situations where the man ain't got nowhere to stay. Now he moves in with the woman. And now 
even without them having a defined relationship, right? It's, it's still not official. And now she struggles to kick him out because now the issue is, I don't know where he's going to go. He has nobody to help him. This sympathy, this guilt. And in some cases, again, her using that because in reality, she just doesn't want to be alone and other various reasons. But either way, now feeling stuck, right? And, and, and it just adds more and more drama. So I really believe there needs to be a time limit. Now, what that time limit needs to be is dependent on you as an individual, all right? I cannot give this general time for everyone to use because it's also about the, the amount of quality time that was spent getting to know each other. So what I mean by that is this. There are two people who can be talking to each other, dating, and in three months, they've talked here and there. They've gone out a couple times. They haven't had, maybe because of busy schedules, not because of lack of desire, just busy schedules, a lot going on. Maybe they live a distance from each other. They probably need, not probably, they do more than likely need more time to dive deeper into each other before they can move forward. On the other hand, you can have two people who've been dating for three weeks, but in those three weeks, they've been talking every single day. They don't see each other several times per week. They've done the due diligence. They don't need more than three weeks. Like to someone else, they might say, oh, well, three weeks, that's too soon. Why? If we already spent all that time, because again, it's not about the time, so to speak. It's about the work you've put in it in that time. And if you've already been spending all this quality time, all these conversations, asking all these questions, what is three more weeks going to do for you? What is months going to do for you? What is another year going to do for you? At that point, they should at least know, okay, I want to move forward with you in a, an official relationship unless there's outside variables that might come into play. And again, that's why I cannot give a definitive, hey, it needs to be three months, six months, whatever. You as a woman, this way you have to really trust yourself, trust your intuition, talk to God. You know what I'm saying? You, you got to implement those things to really understand when this, there needs to be a cutoff here. But I do believe having at least, if not a very specific set deadline, some idea of when enough is enough. All right? And, and making sure to, in, to speed up the process, so to speak, to ensure that we don't have to wait seven, eight, nine, whatever months, let's get that quality time in. Let's make sure we're asking those questions. The, the, the sooner we can do those or do our due diligence, the sooner we can get this person out the way if they are not for us. I, I always say on my tour events, you got to learn how to get them in, get them out. All right? Keep, keep it moving because, again, all they're doing is blocking the way to receiving the person who is for you. So be more intentional. We talk about men needing to be intentional, but as a woman, be intentional about what you're trying to accomplish here. And let's get through this process as quickly as we can. All right, so now before we get to the next point, real quick, I want to give you an opportunity to join my special coaching program. This program is going to teach you about tapping into your feminine energy, healing from your past, hearing from God more clearly, uh, meeting more quality, relationship-minded men. You name it, there's all kinds of information in there as well as we do uh, live Q and A's where I answer your personal questions. So many women are experiencing great results from it. I want that to happen for you. So go to receivingmyblessings.com or click the link in the description or in the comment section. Join today. I'm telling you, you are going to love it. So now, the next thing for a woman to do, if he has yet to make it official, is stop giving away your value. So what do I mean by that? Here's the thing. And let me say this. Let me start off by saying this. We, we unfortunately live in a world that has blurred the lines of what used to be marital benefits that are now being given in relationships, okay? And because relationships today are pretty much like marriage light, you know, or uh, diet marriage, you know what I'm saying? Like this, this one tier below, but people are carrying on pretty much the same way, just without the legality of it and the spiritual implications of it, but there's still spiritual implications. It makes it difficult because what I would say is a marriage benefit, someone else can argue, well, that's what people in relationships do. All right. So 
with that understood, let me still say this. Because we're talking about he hasn't even made it official with you yet. All right? It's one thing. People can make their argument about doing certain things when you're officially in a relationship. But to be doing those things and it's not even official and it's been going on for months, you are shooting yourself in the foot. Okay? And so this is what I mean by giving away your value. Whether people want to admit it or not or, or understand this or not, back in the days, and I'm going way, way back, right? Part of the incentive of getting married or becoming committed to someone, right, as a, as a man, was you really didn't receive those benefits anywhere else. If you wanted someone that could hold down the household, nurture the kids, or help you have raise a family with, um, consistent intimacy, all these different things, well, that used to be you had to get married or you had to get committed. And the more and more these things are given outside of that, that, that dynamic, and again, even outside of an actual official relationship, the more it deters or contributes to men feeling like, well, I don't, why do I need to make it official? I'm already getting what I want. So when you're dating this guy, and, and listen, I'm not here to shame you if you have been doing all kinds of things, you, you getting intimate with him, you cooking for him, you doing all this stuff, right? What's happened has happened. The key is you got to take a step back and say, well, wait a minute. I think I've gone too far. Now I think I've gone too far, all right? And if this man can't even give me commitment, again, we're not going to get into the argument of he's, those things are really for marriage. That's a different discussion. But the point is, he can't even at least give you commitment and clarity and intention. Then why you keep giving all this value to him? You know what I'm saying? The dating phase is really supposed to be about getting to know each other to see if we are willing to come together in a serious relationship. And of course, hopefully marriage, but we live in a world that some people argue they don't even want to get married. Again, whole different discussion. But the point is, you got to ask yourself, why, why am I giving so much when you're not even getting what you need in return? What's really going on here? And some of you, if you're honest with yourself, you're doing this because you're hoping it will get you the commitment. You're hoping it will get him to like you. Now, some of you may be doing it because you just enjoy doing it. I'll save that discussion for later. But for those of you who know deep inside, know you're doing it to gain his approval. You're doing it to hopefully get his him to be in relationship with you. You got to stop. That's the wrong reason to do it. And if you've been doing it this whole time and he's still not giving you a relationship, well, clearly it's not working. Doesn't mean it's not good. Doesn't mean it doesn't have value. It just means this man is not built to honor that value. This man is not wired to see it for what it is and pour back into you what you need. And it's time for you to put an end to that. So stop giving away your value and understand when you are going doing too much in the situation. All right. So we got a couple more to go. So the other thing you need to do when... A man has yet to make it official, make the relationship official with you, is you need to ask yourself, why are you even still here? Okay? So this is one of those things where and you can you probably need to make this, if not the very first step, somewhere in the top two steps, okay? Because this is a foundational question that needs to be asked. Why am I still here? Again, there's no point in worrying about him becoming official with you and giving you commitment if there's unaddressed red flags. There's no point in trying to make things official with him if the only reason why you're really here is because you're just afraid to be alone, but you know deep inside he's not the guy for you. You know what I'm saying? And we can go through the list of all the different reasons why a woman may still be there even though this is not where she belongs. And that's why you have to really get to the root of why. Now, of course, there's going to be some of you who are there because maybe you genuinely feel like there's a connection here. You genuinely feel like you two can have an amazing relationship, you know, and, and maybe there's just some things that need to be cleaned up and then we can actually make this happen. But for many, many women out there, that's not the case. For many of you, it is all these other things that I've mentioned. And you got to be willing to be honest with yourself because if you're not you're going to fall into the trap of, again, deepening this unhealthy attachment and struggling to walk away. 
And when you start to recognize, because for some of you, you may be able to ask yourself that question and come to the realization, I'm just going to use the example of you're afraid to be alone. And so let's say you come to the realization, okay, I know I'm here because I'm afraid to be alone. But even though I know that, I still struggle with walking away. All right. I understand that, right? Again, this is a no judgment zone. I love you. I, I pray that you're able to walk away, but I understand that some of you may still struggle even when you acknowledge what it is. And this is where now, at least if we understand we have this struggle, we need to take it a step further and go into healing. Because the reason why you're struggling is due to the things from your past you haven't healed from. And those things, when they linger, contribute or create these unhealthy attachments to individuals that now create all these other problems. So this is your opportunity. Even if, even if you have to go through the healing process while you're still battling the, the, the desire of wanting to stay here, I, st I just want you to get started. I just want you to start on that path of healing. And, you know, I'm always going to say, listen, I don't care who you go to. I don't care what book you read. All I care is that you get it done. Of course, I have the Love After Heartbreak book that gives you the steps to healing. In the program that I mentioned earlier, there's modules on the healing process. But I will just be happy that you're going to someone to get the help that you need. That's all that matters. All right? So be willing to take that step even if you feel like you are not ready to walk away. Even if you feel like, I know this is a problem, I just don't, I don't know if I have the strength to do anything about it. Okay, but then let's just still do the healing in the meantime, and then we'll see how you feel after you get through that process. All right, so now, the next thing that I'll mention of what you need to do when a man has yet to make it official is please, 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 please avoid playing any games. All right. So what, what am I talking about? I've seen tons of scenarios where the woman is frustrated, stressed, whatever, about the fact that this man has made it official. She may go speak to her friends or family, whoever, and they'll do stuff like, oh, you know what? You need to make him jealous or you need to ignore him for a week or you need to do all these little tips and tricks and game playing trying to get this reaction out of this man. And, and maybe get things to move forward. Now, here's the problem. Number one, game playing in general is unhealthy, right? But here's where it can be very deceptive because let's use the example of trying to get him jealous. You're dating this man. Let's say it's been seven months, right? Maybe even years. I, I just felt the need to mention that because there's literally people going through this for years. But let's stick with seven months. It's been seven months. He hasn't made it official. You're like, all right, I'm going to make him jealous. You start, you go on a date with another man or you, you let yourself be seen with another man. Whatever it is, you, you allow him to find out you was entertaining another man, whether you were just speaking about it or whatever. All right. So now he gets jealous because understand this, whether the man is serious about you or not, jealousy can still come about. And even more so, whether he's serious about you or not, he can still become very territorial. Okay. So he reacts to this. And now he shows you extra attention and, and tries to go hard to win your affection back, right? And you feel like, oh, okay, this worked. No, it didn't. It's just a temporary, momentary thing that happened that, yeah, may make you feel a little good because it got a reaction out of him. But once he has you back, I almost guarantee he's going to go back to his nonsense. And even if you actually, out of that action of making him jealous or game playing, get him to make it official, if it took that for him to make it official, what kind of foundation are we building this relationship on? Is this really sustainable? I'm going to answer that for you. No, it's not. It's not sustainable. Are there exceptions to the rule? Yes. I'm not going to say no one's never pulled it off. But for the vast majority of people, all they did was put a temporary band-aid on the situation, and eventually things are going to blow up again. So it serves you no good. And then there's the flip side. God forbid you do the game playing of trying to make him jealous and then he doesn't get jealous. For some women, that will piss you off even more. That will, that will now make you feel like he doesn't care about me and now you're fighting hard 
to, to win his attention, his affection, and you fall deeper into a negative, unhealthy cycle. One way or another, the game playing is pointless. Follow the other steps I mentioned in this video. Having the talk, you know what I'm saying? Addressing the red flags, all these things. But leave the games alone. They will only make matters worse. All right, so I've given you a lot to consider this video, but here's another thing you, you got to do, all right? When a man has yet to make it official with you, you need to talk to God. Plain and simple, you've got to go into prayer, talk to God, and gain clarity on what you need to be doing next, all right? I think too many times we are emotionally reactive or we are reacting off of the bad advice from someone else, the bad input from friends and family who may be operating out of their own bitterness and hurt, right? Their own negative perceptions of things rather than going to God. I always say pray before you react. And, and again, none of us are perfect. Some of us are still going to have moments where we end up just reacting. But when you can, pray before you react. But I think it's so important when it comes to dating and relationships that if you are a believer, you always include God in the process because a lot of stuff that you're trying to analyze, figure out, understand, that clarity could be brought to you by just seeking out God. You know what I'm saying? And I think in situations where... Because listen, the reality is that there's going to be some situations like this that are genuinely fixable. That genuinely, it's just two people who are misinterpreting things or operating out of a certain kind of fear, and they can get out of out, getting if they can get out of their own way, they can have an amazing relationship with each other. I'll, I'll admit that's not the typical scenario, right? But that that is that does happen. However, for many of you, it's just you're dealing with the wrong person, and even if this person wants to act right, because that's the other thing. It's like, all right. Let's say you address things and they're willing to make uh, improvement in all these different things. That doesn't mean it's sustainable. That doesn't make them automatically the right person for you. And that's why I'm a firm believer. And you still got to get that, that cosign by God. You still got to make sure, okay, it, is this really for me? Because there's going to be some situations where, all right, you're dealing with a man who wants to make it official right away, who's doing certain things. And he may be a generally good dude, but not the right one for you. And if he's not the right one for you, then that means inevitably at some point, it's going to blow up in your face. So to save ourselves a lot of headaches, talk to God, get in tune with your spirit. It will do wonders for you. But ultimately understand, listen, not everyone is ready for what you're ready for, but you are not obligated to stay, stay around and wait for them to make up their mind. So if this man doesn't know what he wants, if this man is not sure, even if he expresses all this deep love and desire for you, if he is unable to get on the same page as you, then you have to be prepared to walk away. And understand that if this situation is not for you, then that means God has something bigger and better waiting for you on the other side. Hey, thank you for watching this video. I pray it was helpful to you. Be sure to watch this one over here on the five things men hate that women do in the early stages of As dating. you have to be mindful of, where are these people speaking from? Meaning, are they speaking from hurt? Because there's a lot of people that get the advice of other bitter, hurt women. For example, I had a client one time 